Hey everyone, so guess where we are? So we just flew um, today over to Anaheim in California. Um, definitely could not miss the return of the Disneyland Forever 60th Celebration Fireworks as well as the 50th Celebration of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Uh, so we flew in kind of late today, so no parks today, but we will definitely be heading to the parks tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to head over to California Adventure first tomorrow, and then um, the next day over to Disneyland. So yeah, looking forward to a great weekend. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, so here we are at Pacific Wharf doing the Boudin Bakery Tour. Uh, so for those of you that don't know what this is, um, it's a self-guided tour through the Boudin Bakery, and you get to see how their wonderful sourdough bread is made. Uh, so the Boudin Bakery Tour actually opened um, on February 8th, 2001 with um, Disney California Adventure Park. Um, it used to be a tour where you listen to some, listen to uh, them talk and you, uh, while you went through the tour. Uh, but now, um, since January 2015, the Boudin Bakery Tour is now a self-guided tour and it's kind of just a walkthrough. Uh, so a reason to go on the Boudin Bakery Tour um, even though it might seem kind of boring, is um, you, get to g you get to taste some of their amazing sourdough bread for free. Uh, so yeah, I don't know about you guys, but with the rising, ever-rising prices of theme park tickets, parking, food, and now with having to pay for Genie Plus, uh, I definitely love some free things. And um, their sourdough bread is honestly amazing. So definitely got to check out this tour if you haven't been before. Here we have some of the amazing uh, sourdough bread here uh, for sale. Um, they make a really large um, Mickey shaped uh, sourdough bread as well as baguettes and the traditional um, sourdough bread bowl that you find at most boudin um, at most boudin bakeries when you order clam chowder. A bit expensive, but um, definitely the sourdough bread is really good. And if I had someone to share it with, I definitely would buy um, either the bread bowl or the baguette for sure. All right, so it is nighttime, and we are now waiting for the ten fifteen show of World of Color over at Pixar Pier. Uh, so World of Color was one of the things that hadn't been brought back to California Adventure Disneyland um, for a really long time due to the pandemic. Uh, but they just reopened World of Color in April this year. So definitely very excited to see it. It's been um, definitely about three years uh, since I've seen World of Color. The last time I saw World of Color was in August of 2019 during the last D23 Expo. So it's definitely been definitely been a bit since I've seen it so definitely excited uh, so something that you guys uh, should know and hopefully this helps you not make the same mistakes that we did um, so unfortunately we were not able to get here um, during uh, the time that uh, they were doing the virtual queue um, yeah we were having some brunch outside the parks and uh, we totally forgot about the virtual queue um, but if you have uh, park tickets that day and a park reservation um, and your park tickets include either park hopper or admission to California Adventure, uh, you can go on the app around 12 p.m. and enter the virtual queue. Uh, so the virtual queue will give you access to the previously um, fast pass areas of, of the world of color, blue and yellow sections. Uh, so definitely for the nine o'clock show, it's super busy. Um, we tried to see in the 9 o'clock show, but since we didn't have the virtual queue um, areas at all, it was fully crowded and we really could not see it at all. So we came back for the 1015 show. Uh, the 1015 show is a little better, uh, but definitely try to get that virtual queue. Um, that will be able to secure you a much better spot. Um, we got lucky and uh, we did find a pretty nice spot, but Generally, there aren't a lot of nice viewing spots because they save pretty much all the best for the virtual queue as well as the dessert party. And um, they do, they did say that they do open up the areas uh, 
kind of close to the front or to the sides around 10 p.m. But as you guys know, um, a lot, and I said this before, um, the nighttime shows really only run every day during summer peak season. And when it's not peak season, only on the weekends. So that means a lot of crowds, a lot of people. So at 10 p.m., um, if you aren't already in that queue for for the past maybe half an hour, so maybe at 9.30 or 9.15, um, you're definitely not going to be able to get a good spot. So the best is just to try to get that virtual queue around noon. Um, on our next trip, we definitely will be doing that. Uh, we definitely learned our lesson this time. For those of you that have never seen it before, um, World of Color is pretty similar to Fantasmic, um, except there's no um, characters, no floats, and no fireworks. Um, it's a bunch of water mirrors and um, special effects and um, dancing fountains. It's definitely very beautiful. Um, definitely World of Color never disappoints. Um, yeah, I actually was quite fortunate to also see the 60th um, Celebration World of Color um, in 2016. Uh, but I definitely do prefer the original more than the 60th Celebration one uh, for those of you that were also here during the 60th. Hey everyone, so last night after World of Color, we were pretty exhausted, so we just had some dinner and went back to the hotel. Uh, so today is our Disneyland day. So excited to see um, all the nighttime shows tonight. Uh, definitely going to check out the Main Street Electrical Parade, Disneyland Forever, as well as Fantasmic. Uh, but right now we are at the Tale of the Lion King at the Fantasyland Theater um, over at Disneyland. Uh, so Tale of the Lion King is actually not really new uh, to the parks here at all. Um, Tale of the Lion King actually first debuted um, in California Adventure uh, on June 7, 2019. And it was pretty short. It only was there for the summer. Um, it closed at the end of summer on September 2nd of 2019. Um, and then there there was no Tale of the Lion King show until this year at the end of May. Uh, they put it at the Fantasyland Theater where they used to have Mickey and the Magical Map. Um, yeah, so actually I really like Mickey and the Magical Map, but I definitely uh, really enjoyed seeing Tale of the Lion King over in California Adventure. So I love that they brought this show back. Um, I love that they gave Tale of the Lion King a much bigger stage and this way they can have many more uh, performers on stage and actors and dancers and um, also they can actually have uh, set changes and um, bring the story to even more to life so definitely happy to see the show again i really like the tale of the lion king uh, much better actually than the festival of the lion king over at um, animal kingdom at walt disney world um, because i don't know i just really like that the tale of the lion king really tells you the whole story I also like that it's so simple, like they use um, a lot of uh, musical instruments and um, they do a lot of singing and they use their voices um, and also a lot of amazing choreography. Uh, so I definitely recommend um, seeing this show if you haven't seen it before. So for those of you that don't know, um, the Main Street Electrical Parade first debuted on June 17th of 1972. Um, and. Uh, yeah, this year is 2022, so the Main Street Electrical Parade is 50 years old. Wow, it's hard to believe the parade is so old already. Uh, so the original parade um, ran at Disneyland Park in California from 1972 all the way until 1996. Um, and then also they brought the Main Street Electrical Parade over to California Adventure um, between the years of 2001 and 2010. Um, for those of you that live on the East Coast, um, there was also the Main Street Electrical Parade over at Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World that ran between um, 1977 and 2016. Definitely a long time there as well. Um, so the, Mag the Main Street Electrical Parade uh, has been brought back uh, various times uh, for a limited time over at Disneyland um, in California during the years of 2017. 2019 and this year for their 50th celebration. Uh, so they brought back um, the Main Street Electrical Parade um, this year actually. Um, they started it in um, April of 2022 and it will be um, ending its time at uh, Disneyland um, 
in September. So definitely had to um, get out here and see it uh, during its 50th. Um, supposedly uh, the last float, um, I had heard that the last float had some changes uh, besides the big 50th sign um, on the first float. There was um, some extra stuff that they added. So definitely excited to see that. Um, yeah, so definitely seen the Main Street Electrical Parade many times um, throughout the years at Disneyland. It's definitely one of those classic things um, of Disneyland Park. Uh, one of those things that you should see at least once in your life. Um, it is very beautiful at night. Um, all the floats are covered in little tiny uh, LED lights, all the characters, um, the music's pretty cute. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys um, will be able to get over here before um, they end their limited time run in 2022. And if not, um, I'm sure the Main Street Electrical Parade will be back again soon. Just imagine, if you were standing right here over 60 years ago, you'd be standing in the middle of an orange room. One visionary man stood right where you are now. Fantasmic, we are here still on Main Street. We are watching the Disneyland 60th Celebration Fireworks, Disneyland Forever. Disneyland Forever is my absolute favorite fireworks show that Disneyland has to date. Um, another really good one was done for Pixar Fest, but I definitely still prefer Disneyland Forever. Uh, so Disneyland Forever premiered um, on May 21st of 2015 uh, for Disneyland 60th Celebration and um, they stopped running the show on September 5th, 2016, just after Labor Day, um, at the end of the 60th celebration. So they did actually bring Disneyland Forever back um, in 2019 from June until, sub until um, September um, for the summertime, but it hasn't been back since. Uh, but this year, um, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Main Street Electrical Parade, they did finally bring back Disneyland Forever for the summer. Uh, so it has been back since April of tw April 20th this year and also will, will end um, early September, uh, the same as the Main Street Electrical Parade this year. Um, yeah, so the Disneyland Forever fireworks um, debuted alongside Paint the Night Parade and um, the 60th celebration of the world of color um, that I talked about earlier over at California Adventure. Yeah, so I'm so excited that this fireworks show is back. Um, there's been a lot of really good ones after this, but nothing can compare to the amazing 60th celebration of Disneyland. So something that I really love about the Disneyland fireworks compared to Magic Kingdom fireworks is that um, for Disneyland's fireworks, they actually are able to project um, the projections all over Main Street. So it really makes it feel like Main Street comes alive. You can also see the fireworks um, projections and the fireworks themselves at some other viewing spots at Disneyland as well. You can also view them at It's a Small World, um, as well as um, Adventureland uh, by Tom Sawyer Island. Um, it's a small world is a good option um, if you get to Main Street quite late and there's not any not enough spaces and it's really hard to find a space um, because it's a small world is a lot less crowded than Main Street though so, um, the fireworks viewing and um, the projections do look the best um, on Main Street uh, as it was made to be seen with the castle though I do also really enjoy um, seeing them over at it's a small world where it's a lot less crowded and I can see all the projections very clearly. Um, definitely by Tom Sawyer Island, you do miss like some of the fireworks as um, the, a lot of the trees are in the way. So I definitely don't recommend uh, viewing it there. Yeah, Magic Kingdom. Um, I did hear that uh, for the for the 50th celebration of Magic Kingdom, Disney Enchantment actually includes projections all over Main Street as well. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get over there to see that yet as every time I try to go, it ends up pouring on me and the fireworks get canceled. Um, but the uh, but Wishes and Happily Ever After didn't include uh, those kind of projections all over Main Street. So yeah, I've always said that uh, Magic Kingdom has the space 
So they definitely should、um, include the projections as Disneyland is much smaller and is able to incorporate them in pretty much all of their fireworks shows nowadays. So, yeah,、uh, definitely、uh, very happy.、Uh, this was actually my main reason for flying out from Florida.、Uh, I had to catch the 60th fireworks again before they, before they went away again for who knows how much longer. So here we are at Fantasmic.、Um, after the fireworks,、uh, we rushed over to、um, the New Orleans Square area and Adventureland to try to get a viewing spot for Fantasmic today.、Um, it definitely wouldn't be a visit,、uh, a complete visit to Disneyland for me without seeing Fantasmic.、Um, yes, I know、um, you guys are saying, well, I already have Fantasmic over at Hollywood Studios, so why do I really need to see it here at Disneyland Park? Um, why do I need to fly over to see it? But actually,、um, if you guys haven't seen both, vers both versions of Fantasmic,、uh, they're both pretty different.、Um, the one at Disneyland、um, actually does involve the different floats and、um, the, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean、um, pirate ship, as well as updated pyrotechnics and lighting, and Disneyland does have the 20 foot Maleficent Dragon. So, I definitely feel that、um, the one at Disneyland is a lot cooler than the one at Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World.、Uh, so, a little history of Fantasmic、uh, for those of you that have never seen the show before.、Uh, Fantasmic actually opened in May of 1992.、Um, it's actually、uh, 30 years old this year. Isn't it crazy? It's been 30 years of Fantasmic.、Um, and.、Uh, They closed it for a few years、uh, during the 60th celebration as they were building、um, Star Wars Land at Disneyland.、Uh, they reopened Fantasmic at Disneyland Park、um, in July of 2017.、Uh, in 2017's version,、uh, that's when they did all the updates, a lot of、um, extra lighting and choreography, and that's when they.、Um, Updated the Peter Pan scene to the Pirates of the Caribbean scene on the ship, as well as um, removing um, Snow White、uh, from the float and putting Tangled instead,、um, along, with some, along with some other updates、uh, to make it look really pretty.、Uh, and unfortunately, it was closed、uh, for the pandemic for a while and has just reopened this year at the end of May. Uh, so, definitely,、uh, if you guys haven't seen Fantasmic, you gotta get out here to Disneyland Park and check it out.、Um, Fantasmic, pretty much、um, the plot of the story is it is a tale through Mickey's imagination.、Uh, you see his happy dreams and you see the villains try to create nightmares for him. It includes a lot of pyrotechnics, fireworks,、um, lighting,、um, parade floats, boats,、um, a lot of special effects. It's really amazing. It's a great way to end your night.、Um, yeah, so something interesting that we found here today、uh, when waiting for Fantasmic after fireworks. So, actually, it is now a seating and standing show.、Um, all the previous times I've been here to watch Fantasmic, it has never been a seating show. It has never been a sitting show.、Uh, so, we found the closer you are to the middle、uh, are where the sitting sections are. And if you're more to like the sides or more farther away, those are standing sections.、Um, yeah, so it's definitely kind of nice to sit through the show. It's nice to not have to stand the entire time. Well, and that concludes our short weekend trip over to Disneyland and California Adventure this weekend.、Uh, so thank you everyone for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and see you guys next time. Bye!